Good morning, everybody. It's BDF44 coming at you with another video. So, last night I made a video uh, talking about the Brooklyn Nets and how they were going to be affected by Kyrie Irving's injury, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I also made a video about, you know, the lucky emblem and all that, and giving that the good old-fashioned finger. But today I want to talk about the Brooklyn Nets from a different point of view. And that is from the KD point of view, and how that situation looks, rather. So, Kevin Durant is obviously one of the top players of all time. I think he may be the most, he's the premier offensive talent of this generation in terms of scoring. Um, you know, you think about him, you think about Kobe Bryant, you think about Michael Jordan, you think about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <clears throat> Carl Malone, those are people that come to mind when I think about scoring the basketball immediately. Steph Curry comes to mind quickly. People like that, they just abnormally fantastic scores. KD might be the most talented of them all, honestly. He may be. Him and Kareem probably are the guys. We're going to have to see him on display at his best in some very, very uncomfortable circumstances come these next couple games. And... You know, a lot of people were talking about this was Kyrie's karma and all of that. If there is karma to be found in this situation, for, in my opinion, and this is fluff because nobody, you know, some people don't believe in karma at all. But if there is, to, if there's any to be found, it probably falls on KD for a plethora of, of reasons. One may be, if you were to, to be inclined to entertain such a thought. One may be because of a lot of how he behaves outside of basketball as it pertains to snapping at people, you know, going back and forth with people, kind of just putting out some real, real aggressive energy uh, in some situations that, that maybe he could have held back on. Maybe it would have been best for the entire situation if he just may not have, have approached it the way that it may have been approached. That's my point of view. You don't have to agree with that. One may, may be inclined to say, yo, this is his karma for just flat out being an asshole. Um, some may say that this is karma for him constantly, um, you know, going, trying to find a super the easy way to win a championship. You know, this is the second time he's put together a super team. Uh, some would say the second time he's done it, trying to attack the legacy of LeBron James, some would may say. Um, some of the things that he may have said, just in general, might have uh, brought about some to think that this might be something that, that, that he's due. But most importantly, it's just about every, all of the fans and everybody who says he's better than LeBron James, people who say he's the best player in the world, rather, just in general. When he's found himself in situations where he's won championships, uh, with players who were just so incredibly talented and he found himself in those situations despite being so incredibly talented himself. Um, situations where he could have created parity in the league or helped create parity in the league. He, situations where he could have maybe stuck it out with Russell Westbrook and made it so that his career may be going a different trajectory. Uh, you know, maybe the city of Oklahoma may look at it and say, hey, he left us high and dry. Maybe, maybe some would say it's karma for that reason. <clears throat> it's a lot of stuff, you know. Let's just be real. Katie's an amazing talent, but he's displayed some some real, real tough stuff to swallow in terms of his opinions and how he approaches certain situations and things like that. He's got a hell of a chip on his shoulder. I'd imagine it drives him to be great. I'd imagine it drives him to to be guarded and protect what it is that he owns. But it also makes some some people feel uncomfortable. I, I would imagine uh, just in reading some of the stuff and most most importantly. Um, you know, it just it leaves a divide between himself and others in, in terms of people want, wanting to reach out and expecting good energy back. When you have that perception, you, you allow yourself to be seen as so cynical, so negative, so sarcastic, so... You know what I mean? That's who he come off as to me. Uh, and that's who he seems like he wants to come off as. And that's his choice. But there's a cost to that. And that cost sometimes comes in the form of karma. And he found himself thinking he was going to get an easy championship ring. Everybody was talking about getting him an easy championship ring because he's with Kyrie Irving. They, 
acquired James Harden, <clears throat> getting Blake Griffin, and picked up LaMarcus Aldridge. And all of a sudden, things start happening to every one of those guys, all of them around him. LaMarcus Aldridge's situation, he had to walk away from the game. James Harden in the, in the hamstring. Kyrie Irving in this messed up ankle. Yeah, those guys are suffering the ills of the situation. But he's the one going to have to take on the, the brunt of the responsibility of carrying a broken team. And it's the very thing that he's tried to avoid his entire career. It's the very thing he was trying to flee from having to do anywhere he's had to play, including Golden State. Even though obviously he has Steph Curry, so that would be null and void in theory. But what I'm saying to you is he wanted to make sure that everywhere he ended up playing, he had an opportunity to beat LeBron James and win the championship each time, which is ultimately the, the goal for every team I'd imagine, every player I'd imagine. But, but, how do you go about it? How do you go about it? That's the lesson I took from that. How do you go about it, you know? That can determine whether or not people are rooting for you. Even if you don't believe in karma, that'll determine whether or not people have conversations like these and your, with your name attached to it, for which I would not want personally. I know I sound harsh talking about this dude that I do not know. But like I said, it's reactionary. When I receive energy or when I see perceive energy being put out that's negative, all I can say is that's negative energy. And when things happen, Things take place. Circumstances, the universe provides you perspectives that suddenly just come out of nowhere. Seemingly improbable. I have to take a look at that. I, a person like myself, will take a look at that from a perspective, a spiritual perspective. From a did you cause this perspective. I have to. I've, I've been on, the, on both sides of karma too many times not to, not to consider it for my, myself, personally. So... You take that for what it's worth. Point is, KD now has to prove, every, prove to everyone that he can do it by himself. And he didn't want to do that. Now he's going to have to run around with a bad team like LeBron James. Like some players, like a Devin Booker for so many years. Like a guy like Bradley Beal. These are the type of circumstances, like a guy like Westbrook. These are the type of situations he was trying to stay away from. It's the kind of stuff he left other people high and dry to keep from having to feel and deal with. And he's the one coming off the Achilles. That's the messed up part about it for him. Out of all this, all these players that he picked up, he's trying to he's trying to maneuver through the recovery of that injury unscathed. And it's gonna be very difficult for him to do that without those two stars in a five, game five and game six situation against a guy like Giannis, against a guy like PJ Tucker. And then you think back about the security guard situation and you see why that's so that was so pivotal when you have the mental edge in a series and all of your horses that's a stranglehold you won the series now something like that happens if you still have your horses you're still going to outclass them but then now something like that happens and you lose Kyrie and you lose Harden now that bulletin board material I was talking about when they say, oh, the security guard was, can't save you now. P.J. Tucker could be saying that to him the entire game as he's defending him. Where your guard at? Where your guard at? Where your, where your security guard at? And it ain't no James Harden to pass to. It ain't no Kyrie to, to, to kind of keep the defense off of him. The defense can completely collapse on Kevin Durant. Now, we know he's great enough to overcome that in theory, but he's going to have to. Because if he don't, he's going to hear about it for the rest of his career and beyond. It won't be no more, oh, he's as good as, as LeBron. Oh, he, no. Nah. Those conversations will be null and void. Why? Because this scenario has been created so that he can prove he's better than LeBron James. You better than LeBron James? Prove it. You did all this to try to keep from having to do this, but we all know how great you are. So now, the universe, him, he's going to force you to show us the very thing. Now, here's the deal. Personally, I think he's going to respond. I do. I wouldn't be surprised if Kevin Durant goes for 60 points in the next game. I would not be surprised because he is that great. Because the fact of the matter is, if the universe is trying to show Kevin Durant anything, is that he didn't need to do all that stupid shit. None of it. 
responding to people the way that he did, joining super teams that already have 73 wins, joining James Harden, Kyrie Irving. He never needed to do any of that. That was the moral of my point. This is what I came here to say. He should have never did any of that because he never needed to do any of that. He was great enough. He was great enough to do what the rest of them probably couldn't do. And that was win all the time. But he never wanted to give himself that challenge. He never wanted to take that hard road. He never wanted to see. He never wanted to believe in himself to that degree. He just wanted to point at everybody else and say, y'all mad at me. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all doing this. Y'all trying to attack me. Y'all trying to disrespect me. But then he put himself in position to be seen as weak. Brother, you disrespect yourself. And when nobody else going to say that shit, they're going to call you cupcake. They're going to say, oh, he's doing this, the weakest move, this and that. No, 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 no. Let's focus. Let's focus. He took what was a, a legacy that could have either been challenging or triumphant, and he tried to condense it to make it about as easy and manageable as possible. But that comes at a cost. That comes at a cost because it makes you defensive to the idea that other people see you as weak. So what do you do? Put your guard up. Traumatize yourself when you act that way. Because you're perceiving everybody coming after you for a decision that you made to make things easy on yourself. Trust me, I can speak to this because I've lived it. Then you're looking around saying, I'm inadequate. I can't, I can't. Now people are looking at me, they don't respect me. No, 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 no. You made a decision to be seen in such a light, so now they have the fuel to use that against you. They can call you a cupcake because you ran from OKC. They can call you uh, somebody who, who, who is not nice, so to speak, because you be responding to people like this on burners or not burners or saying whatever it is you got to say despite people's feelings being hurt or what have you. Like you're entitled to be able to, to put out whatever energy you want. No, that comes at a cost. The, in, the, <laughs> the universe will show you. It comes at a cost. Being humble helps pay for some of that without the trauma that comes with it, without the, without the drama that comes with it. Being humble and just saying, you know what? Nah, I'm going to take the high road. Yeah, that helps pay for some of this stuff. You don't have to deal with some of the consequences of what comes with putting out bad energy, what comes with taking the easy route despite other people falling by the wayside for you to do so. Steph Curry ain't going to win another championship because KD left. Westbrook ain't going to win no championship because KD left. These are things that happen. These are things that you did that affect other players around you. Now, that's not your responsibility. I promise you it's not. That's not what I'm trying to imply. But now you have people who are looking at you a certain way because you fled the scene for an easier path for yourself. When you had the talent to lead everybody. See, and that's the point. That's the point. That is the point. That's what others have not articulated in regards to Kevin Durant and the way he's gone about this career. That's what they haven't said. People going to be mad at me, man. They ain't going to like this. They ain't going to like this because nobody wants to hear about this kind of stuff. Nobody wants to talk about this kind of stuff. If it's karma to be had, it's because Kyrie Irving has stepped on a white man's eye. Now it's a bad problem. Now, no, oh my God. Kyrie Irving stepped on an emblem of a white dude. Jesus Christ, that's bad luck. No, 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 no. That's not bad luck. Putting out bad energy is bad luck. Talking crazy about people who were defending you is bad luck. Leaving your people you said you go to war with by the wayside because they no longer good enough for you and you want to go on the greener pastures to, to, to fatten your own situation and make yourself more comfortable. Despite who has to, whatever, whoever falls off in regards to that, so be it. Nah, nah, nah. It comes at a cost. Now we're going to see him pay it. This is a championship year for KD, man. And everybody around him gone. Go win it. That's what's coming. You have to go win it. Or you're going to hear about it. The very thing you've been trying to guard against is coming. Because the fact of the matter is, LeBron James dealt with this for many, many years in a row. Kobe Bryant dealt with this for many, many years in a row. Even Michael Jordan dealt with this for a long period of time before Scottie Pippen came. Everybody dealt with this. You dealt with it in Seattle before Westbrook came along. But when Westbrook came along and Harden came along, you became a champ. Or at least got to the finals, rather. But then you left. Psh, out. <laughs> can't, can't win with Westbrook. Maybe it was true, man. Maybe it was true. But it comes at a price when you do it the way that you do it. Ask LeBron James. That Dallas situation. Everybody was mad at him for leaving Cleveland without letting him know. I don't know. When I was looking at that situation back then, I said, eh. 
I'm not saying it's karma necessarily, but maybe, maybe, maybe somewhere in the back of LeBron's psyche, maybe he was dealing with that. Maybe he was dealing with that in some way. Maybe that has something to do with what he was going through in the Dallas series. Maybe. Maybe not. But I think it's worth talking about. The fact of the matter is, he left Miami high and dry, and there's ways to do it. There's simply ways to do it. And the way that he did it left people feeling uncomfortable, left some people by the wayside, left some people high and dry. And as a result, they were unhappy. They were sending curses his way. They were doing what they were saying, what they were saying. But in the end, he ended up having his first year in Miami go absolutely disastrous. I don't know, man. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. My name is BDL44. I'm out.